All right, let's do some examples using the average value formula. Determine the average value of this function on the interval from 0 to 5. So this is our g of x function right here. So we have a little bit of working space over here. I'm going to go ahead and put the formula over here for average value. So I'm going to customize it. Uh, I need g of c equals 1 over b minus a times the integral by a to b. Okay, and I'm going to put g of x dx. Remember, it was f of c and then f of x dx. But the name of this function is g. You could change everything to f. It doesn't quite matter. All right, let's find the average value. Before we do that, let's get an idea of what we think the answer should be. That way we know that all of our calculations work out right. All right, so let's kind of remember what this means here. Um, on the interval from 0 to 5, that's what it tells us, a to b, 0 to 5, um, we have some um, area here. Okay, and that's represented from a to b, g of x, dx. So if you notice, these are geometric shapes. Um, even though we don't have an equation for g of x, that's okay. We can partition this into um, different sections and use geometric formulas to find the area. But what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for the one rectangle that has the width, well, it started out good. It has the width 0 to 5, meaning it has a width of 5. Now, I want to find the one rectangle whose height, okay, um, it uh, gives me the same area in that rectangle as what I just kind of shaded in here. So uh, it, it's very clear that uh, if I only went up to a height of 1 and put a top on this rectangle, I'm leaving out all this area here. So it appears to me that I'm going to have to go up a little bit more. I'm thinking probably about right here. I'm thinking that if I were to extend the left and right hand side of this rectangle went up to about 1.5, I'm just thinking that maybe this area right here um, this excess area outside the rectangle would fill in this gap right here. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Well, that is what we're looking for. So I, I'm trying to think, okay, well, what would the answer to this all be? Well, remember, okay, we're looking for a y value, okay, uh, where uh, the rectangle has a height that gives us the same area. So um, this is the c that gives us that y. It's f of c. I'm thinking it's going to be 1.5, but we'll see what happens over here. All right, g of c is equal to 1 over 5 minus 0, integral 0 to 5, g of x dx. So g of c is equal to 1 fifth, that's the width. Uh, let's find this area. And um, typically the way we find areas, we, we accumulate from left to right. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and create some vertical bars here, if you will. So I'll find the area in this rectangle. Uh, maybe perhaps I would, uh, oops, not here, divide it up right here and maybe find the area in this trapezoid and then find the area in this rectangle. Um, and uh, let me see what that is then. So it appears that the area here in this first triangle is half of the rectangular area, and this rectangular area would be 3, so that looks like it's 1.5 plus. It might be just as easy if it works out well for us to divide this into a, to a triangle on top of a rectangle, or maybe even just find all of this area right here. I think it'll work, and then add it to the area in that triangle. So this appears to be 4 times underneath here. One, so that looks like four plus. Right now let's find the area in this triangle right here that sits atop of sits atop of this region right here. It's a triangle. Area form a tri for a triangle is a half times the base which is two and the height which is two. So a half base times height. Cleaning this up Half of 4 is 2. Okay. 
7.5. 7.5 divided by 5 is going to be 1.5. And that's kind of what we thought uh, the y value should be here um, so that we do have a, um, a rectangle that has the same area as the value of the integral. I just now noticed I put an f of c. Boy, we just oh, yeah, habits die hard. All right, g of c. That's the answer. Let's look at the next one. All right, determine the average value. If we had to estimate approximately where would that be um, that goes from 0 to 4, so I know the width of my rectangle has to be this, this long. Okay, and if I start to build the sides and kind of pause somewhere along here, if I put the height here, I think that's too much space still outside of the rectangle that needs to fill this in. So I'm going to go up a little bit higher. Two maybe. I still think that's too much space on top of outside of the rectangle. I'm going to go maybe around 2.5. That might be too high, but it looks like it's the best estimate I can get right now. So it looks like this ex excess area would fill in the spots right here. Maybe it is too high, but you know what? It gives us a target value. It appears that it's almost, um, almost two and a half. All right, let's customize our formula. So let's find H of C. One over this is a this is b um, four minus zero zero to four uh, the h function four x minus x squared. This is not a geometric shape that we have a known formula for. It's parabolic. So actually here we're going to have to find um, antiderivative and evaluate at the limits. This is the FTC. This is ready for integration. So I'll lose the integral symbol. The antiderivative here would be 2x squared. Antiderivative here would be minus x cubed divided by 3. We're going to evaluate from 0 to 4 and close our bracket. 1 fourth. Everywhere I see x, replace it with 4. So that's going to be 2 times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. 32 minus 4 cubed is 64 thirds. And I knew the 0 was a wonderful number to work with. And everywhere I see x, which is in all terms, I'm going to get a 0. So common denominator with a 3. That becomes 96. This is 32 thirds here. Simplifying, 4 goes into 32 8 times, 8 thirds. That's 2 and 2 thirds. So I was right, I was right around uh, where I needed to be. 2 and 2 thirds. That's the answer. All right, for the next example, determine the average value of Q of X. Oh, pay attention here. Now, this changed up a little bit. It's from 1 to 4 only. So we're only looking at this region right here. So we know the value of the integral represents this, this area right here. Well, okay, well, let's kind of estimate what we think the height's going to be uh, of that one rectangle. I know I have to go up at least to the vertex, the minimum here. Uh, I still have too much area outside, so hmm, this one kind of comes on in here. I'm trying to figure out how high to go. Oh, I didn't want to go up to the curve. That would be probably too high. Yeah, this isn't it. Too much space I'm leaving out, and then these two don't uh, correspond with each other. Yeah, I would need to bring the top down a little bit here so that this um, area right here would, would fit in with this right here. So it's going to probably be about 1.5. Okay, so let's come up here. Q of C equals etc.
Uh, let's find the antiderivatives. They're all ready for um, integration, so uh, that's why I lost the integral symbol. Uh, bump that up to 3, divide by 3, it appears that that's going to be 1 sixth x cubed minus x squared, this antiderivative plus 3x, evaluated from 1 to 4. Oh, how I wish there was a 0. 1 third, oh no. Okay. Okay, plug in a 4, 4 cubed, 64, 64, 6. Minus 16 plus 12. Minus 4. Now let's plug 1 in. That's just going to be 1 sixth. Minus 1 plus 3. Plus 2. And in my cleanup of this problem, I'm going to leave the 1 third on the outside. I'm not going to distribute it just yet. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative sign, 64, 6, minus 4, minus 1, 6, minus 2. That way I can just work with the numbers um, and the fractions individually. That might help a little bit, just to kind of manage it. 64 minus 1, 63, 6, eh, that didn't help. 63, 6, minus 6. Okay, now let's get a common denominator. So this would be 36 over 6. Um, mm, 63 minus 36. 27. 3 goes into 27 9 times. I can still further yet reduce that. 9 6 goes to 3 halves. Let me take a look back at my height of my rectangle. Yeah, I thought this was too high, so yeah, 1.5 should work. Yeah, as a final problem here, notice the interval. Let's go ahead and get it set up. As I'm writing this down, I see that this first term right here requires u substitution. Sometimes this one right here is pretty basic. U substitution is almost like too much work when we can reason through what we think this antiderivative should be. Everything's ready for integration. The antiderivative would be negative one half sine two x. You could check by differentiating plus x squared over 2 plus x evaluated from 0 to 4. <laughs> All right. I know I'm working with this convenient zero, so the second parenthesis doesn't need to be as large. All right, I'm going to plug four in here. So negative one half sine of eight plus 16 over two, eight, eight plus four more plus 12. Right, now let's evaluate at zero. So zero times two is zero, sine of zero, zero. That's zero, that term is zero, that term is zero, so there we are. Now, unless I have a calculator, I'm pretty much finished, other than the fact that I could distribute the one fourth. If you wanted to, it would be negative one eighth sine eight plus three.
if you were to convert this to a decimal just to get an idea you know of what that height would be I didn't do it on this one but you can certainly see that from 0 to 4 your height would have to be probably somewhere in about right here okay, you might want to kind of estimate it yourself okay, this decimal is 2.7 pardon 2.87 2.87 Looks like I have 683. Now, if I had a cal calculator to begin with in the very beginning of this problem, well, then shoot, that's going in as y1 on my, on my calculator, and I'm finding the value of the integral and then dividing it by 4 to get this. I'm going to avoid all this work. Okay, It just depends. Okay, But it's kind of good to do and see both. All right, so why don't you go ahead and estimate over here and make sure that the height of your rectangle appears to be close to 3 so that the area in the rectangle matches the area under the curve from 0 to 4. So that's average value of a function.